Most of us will probably have had some memory of our childhood where nothing could console us except the loving and reassuring presence of our mothers. I remember quite distinctly being about three or four years old and crying, and I'm not even sure why I was crying, but nothing could stop me, no distracting toy, no other person, only the presence of my mother could stop me crying. The need for our parents, the need for their love and affection, is something of which most of us will have some memory. The tenderness of a mother's love expresses safety, a safety that even as older men and women, we will sometimes want to return to. Equally, parents have a kind of parallel experience, the pain of letting go, of seeing children leave home for the first time, overnight stays with friends or on school trips, and finally, leaving home to build their own homes, their own lives. Each goodbye marks a growing independence of their children as they start to live lives where their parents are not their immediate point of reference. Christ will have experienced all of this, as we have, and in this we can perhaps see afresh the wonder of the Incarnation. God has cried out in need to a human mother. At points in his childhood, and even as an adult, Christ would have felt the intensity of that need for his mother's love, for the safety which his mother brought. Mary will have experienced the pain of motherhood as well as its joy. She will have seen Christ leave home to undertake his earthly ministry, leaving those hidden years in Nazareth behind, but not completely behind. Like any other son, Jesus does not leave his mother alone. She is there, quietly in the background of his ministry, even occasionally asking for private words with her son. This station, while not recorded in the Gospel accounts of the Passion, gives us this moment of meeting to express how Mary suffered intimately in each and every stage of her son's Passion. Often Christ is depicted as meeting his mother's eyes from a distance, a shared glance of love as a counterpoint to Jesus' shared glance with Peter in the courtyard the night before. In other representations, the Blessed Mother is seen a little distance, away from Christ, in agony at the sight of her son, who has already fallen under the weight of the cross. In our own station, Mary rests her face on her son's head, holding his cheek in her hand. Christ's face is obscured by her enfolding love. Christ holds on to her arm, her body providing Christ the support that he needs. There is a privacy to this encounter, a privacy into which we cannot intrude. In his saving mission, Christ makes all things new. Everyday objects and relations become transfigured to a new dignity. Physical objects like water and oil, bread and wine, are raised for sacramental use. Our relationship with each other is restored and dignified through a common sonship as adopted children of God. But in this meeting on the road to Calvary, this sorrowful meeting between mother and son, we see how this relationship has been raised to an infinitely higher dignity, as Christ gives each and every single one of us Mary as our own mother. Each and every one of us has received a precious and powerful intercessor who lives even now in this loving relationship with her son. Mary shared most perfectly in her son's sufferings because being freed from all taint of sin, she could live perfectly freely. Her freedom made her open, open to being the mother of God, but also an openness to the saving mission of her son in its entirety. In his last agony, Christ gives us Mary as our mother, and her openness to Christ's saving mission means that she hears us whenever we call on her. In the Ave Maria Stella, the hymn to Mary used in the Divine Office, there's a line which always strikes me because of its boldness. Monstra te esse matrem, show yourself a mother. When we look on this meeting, this moment in which the love and sorrow of parenthood is seen with such intensity, we can see the beauty of Mary's maternal care, not only for Christ, but for each one of us and it can inspire in us a certain boldness to call on Mary as our mother, a mother who despises no petition which we make to her.